for a minute I was like, okay, so this is the pause before the storm. We're just sort of going to circle the political wagons. We're going to get some good con head content. We're going to do the thing that Succession does better than any other show, which is just gin up a reason for an international billionaire to just be in an apartment in yeah. New York in November. Yeah. And the sparks will fly, but they won't fly too high because we've got a bunch of episodes left to really light the conflagration that will end the series. And then Tom and Shiv stepped out on the balcony. <laughs> and you can't sleep on this show, you know? Yeah, so do you feel like basically he's... he's this is an accumulation of emotional trauma from the last however long months, a year with Shiv and the ups and downs and the the betrayal and the yeah. counter betrayal. And then finally it seems to culminate when his cheeky gift of a scorpion is not Hilarious. exactly <laughs> received with glowing reviews. Yeah. I mean, I think two things you and probably all of our listeners have had experiences like this where you're like, ah, oh, I'm not really sure if I should go to this event or if I should do this today. Like, I'm a little tired. And then when you go, you get as much energy as I got that fateful night from the espresso just by the enthusiasm and energy of others. And by losing your sense of self, you're present with what you're doing and you're not thinking about how you're feeling in your bones and body. But what's going on with him, yeah, is that he is no longer capable of, he can't be present because yeah, I, everything I, I, I is I thought it was him. interesting. It, 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 they have a thing that they've done this season, I feel like more than seasons past, where even though we've got this compressed timeline and the episodes are essentially mirroring, I think that the the Norway retreat episode was different, but for the most part, the episodes are matching up to a day in the life kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And the previous episode ended with Shiv and Tom kind of being like, we have now found uh, like a kind of stability in our cheeky, bitey, like barbed repartee yeah. and deciding that maybe we do need each other and that we can be a power couple and we can be king and queen makers. And in the back of the car, it's like, we're going to do this. And it's like, I love strategy. And they're, they're, they're very like fired up for this tailgate party that happens, which is what the, uh, I believe the episode is called tailgate. And, and then it's, it, it kind of does, it doesn't wind back the clock at all, but Tom obviously, wakes up with a kind of sobriety, an emotional sobriety that I didn't really expect throughout this episode. And then it, obviously the dam breaks. Like, I, I think that that's one of the things that's so amazing is this season's been in a lot of ways a portrait of their marriage. I mean, it, yes. it's been one of the dominant storylines and one of the consistent beats that they return to. And to see it all accumulate and then and then kind of overflow there was, was really awesome. I think... Um we should probably note to your point about every episode basically being a day this season, like one of the reasons why he's exhausted might be the fact that he's flown to Sweden at least halfway twice and to Los Angeles and back and <laughs> run a major a news die. network on the yeah, eve of an exactly. election yeah. uh, all in a span of a few days. Like that can really, you know, leave someone feeling a tad winded. I get it. I think the pivot to Tom and Shiv is really crucial to understanding the project of the series. And I also think it's just been a brilliant showcase for two of the show's best performers. One thing that the show has consistently reminded us of and continue to do this episode is that all relationships, professional and personal, are contractual. They're all based on mutual agreements, even if the agreements are not ever said. If you think about what Lucas is doing in this episode as he's sort of doing this sort of casual fuck boy, nothing really matters apology tour is he's just like, well, we can fix it, right? Yeah, there's a little problem there. Okay, and this is bad, but we can fix it. We can fix it. We can fix it. And by the end of the episode, all of the relationships, you know, are in tatters, but which ones are going to continue and what causes them to continue? Because what causes them to continue is that people are going to agree to stay in them, whether it's for right. their own benefit or whether right. it's for like propriety or the, the eyes of the assembled power brokers or whatever. Tom and Shiv hit a breaking point where all of the things that had been agreed upon verbally or non-verbally were brought into the light. And it was hideous. You know, it was excruciating and it was devastating. One of the cool things about this show is that everybody is sort of um, playing a character while also being exactly who they are because there really are no consequences if you're a Roy. Mm -hmm. uh, Kendall can kill someone. Roman can send people pictures of his genitalia. Shiv can go around and essentially betray every single person who's close to her. And uh, nothing really comes of it. Tom points this out where he's just like basically, you know, like you're you're a tough a tough woman who's going to act and never going to have any real consequences the way I was. I was going to go to prison. I was going to lose my job. Everybody who's close to me is trying to cut my throat. So 
Do you, do you find it difficult to locate Shiv's true north, or do you think that that doesn't exist for this character right now? Well, one thing I think is going to be interesting in the last few episodes is how the pregnancy plays out, because it is absolutely reductive and unfair to the writers and the performers and everything about this show to be like, she has something more meaningful that she's holding back than the other characters at, at this moment. But it was interesting, and it was interesting to consider the role this this pregnancy played in that scene, right? When even before Tom says the most unspeakable thing you could say to someone like Shiv in this moment, which is that, you know, you you would be a terrible, essentially you're a terror, you would be a terrible mother. She has something that she is keeping in reserve. There is not just a- She's greased, got a secret. There's not just a grease slide down to a bottomless bottom, you know, which is what Kendall and Roman are revealing themselves to be. There actually is nothing there. There is no depth to which they won't sink. There is nothing they will not leverage or or do a 180 on. There's nothing. But Shiv has drawn a line, you know, by not throwing it back at Tom in that moment, that a line was drawn. He doesn't understand that, and it's her right not to share it with him, but that was interesting. I was watching that scene wondering if he was digging so deep into her with his claws at that moment that he would strike the part that she's holding back or that she would then weaponize it or throw it back at him. And then she would win in a kind mm-hmm. of cheap, potentially, you know, probably I was going to say potentially unhealthy. Most of this relationship is unhealthy way, but she didn't. So I think that that makes her pretty interesting to watch going forward because it also brings the conversation back to do any bonds matter, which I think is what the show is on a very primal level actually about. <laughs> <laughs> 